Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Brian Locke and welcome to Making Monday or yep, I forget it every time. <laughs> Thanks, uh that onion. That uh that was my um that was my Stranger Things intro. I binge watched it all earlier on in the year. I hadn't seen it up to that. And uh that took like 10 minutes to make there was an online generator so it was <laughs> it was absolutely perfect the hardest thing was coming up with enough little phrases to come up uh to come up with um for that uh yeah so uh good evening it is super warm in ireland today i have the window open so if tractors drive by on the road and stuff uh they'll make noise and i'm sorry i can't really do anything about that because i'll probably pass out with the heat if i don't leave the window open so there is that um yeah so i tweeted out a couple of times and i just updated the title of the stream to just there actually during that intro and uh, what we're going to look at today is something that we looked at a good bit at the start of the um at the start of me streaming um this is probably still on automatic mode is it um yeah so um it's not maybe it's not on automatic mode Ooh, I've got the wrong set of um, scenes open. One second. Oh, look how. So I use. Where am I? No, that's not good. Where am I gone? Figure video. There we go. Um, I use um, I use OBS for recording videos too, and uh, so I have uh, I have a video set of scenes and also a streaming set of scenes, and I obviously had the video set up. Um, Mr. Pepperoni, I have not seen a huge amount of the World Cup today. I have uh, I have a bot on Telegram that has messaging me the goals or whatever uh, are you Spanish if the ref's decisions are riling you up uh, I see Aspas got a goal disallowed but uh yeah so um this is a wi-fi alarm clock um we did a good few streams on it maybe three or four at the start um so I just built it on a breadboard um it was pretty simple. It fetched its time from the NTP server, um, displayed it on this seven segment display, and then um, you could also set an alarm via a web page, and then like that was the button to turn off the alarm, and there was a buzzer attached to it. So this was beside my bed, and my daughter has uh, decided to. Uh, that she she wants to start tinkering, so uh, that's fine. I'm I'm not on mute or anything, am I? No. Okay, cool. Just I was worried that maybe I was after I switched over um, scenes, but yeah. So pretty pretty simple. Um, and I would actually like to make this um, into a PCB and maybe even into a kit that like I could sell on Tindy or something. Wouldn't be. Uh, the most fancy of kits or anything but uh i think it's a pretty nice project and like the software things you could do with it are, are fairly nice um hey uh i giggles how's it going uh, i also need to say hi to mr pepperoni blueprint 3d that onion gregor and that's it so howdy to you guys um so what i was thinking about doing first off was um making a prototype not on a breadboard but on a, just a regular proto board so i have all the stuff that i need here because that's normally not a super fun part of the stream to just watch me turn off my camera while i fetch the stuff that i need so yeah it's made up of a seven segment display these are about like 60 cent delivered off aliexpress 
a Wemo D1 Mini. They're about uh, two seventy dollars delivered off AliExpress. Comes with comes the Wemo actually comes with these pin headers, so nothing needed there. Uh, I'm gonna so this is one thing that's gonna change between the two. Um, this is a buzzer module that like you just turned you set the signal high and it made a buzzing noise and this is a kind of a piezo speaker so you need to set PWM on it to um, to make it make a tone um, my wife hated the sound of this one so uh, if we move over to this one we can kind of make it play whatever tones we want it to play so that's just for the alarm uh, we're this is part of moving over to this one we're going to use a transistor as a switch so it can switch more current um, and then also I think we I think it's just for being a flyback diode I'm not a hundred percent sure why you need a diode when you're using these uh, piezoelectric speakers but it was recommended that you use one when I was looking at it before and they are like pretty much free uh, and so <laughs> That's uh, that's uh, fine with me. And then just for the buttons, I was thinking of using these right angled buttons because wouldn't it be nice if you, like even with the perf board model, if you built a case for it and it stood up, had the seven segment on this side, the Wemos on well, that side because you want the, the micro USB uh, sticking out and then like you had the buttons probably sticking up from the back, I would say. Um, so that would be everything you needed. So uh, the <laughs> the brown tone, <laughs> yeah, that that would be less than ideal. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you could like select from a couple of different ones or whatever? For the purpose of the stream, I'll probably make it play anything at all, like, but we can insert a random tone into it. Mm -hmm. So the interesting is not interesting thing is I haven't actually built a breadboard version with this one in it, but will I just skip that and just go to like soldering it all up? Uh, I might just do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, sure. Why don't we just get soldering and see where we get on? Um, yeah. So one thing I want to do as well is I want to take off uh, these pins here because so they're normally like I guess you'd plug it in like that or whatever into your breadboard, but um, like I want to plug it in like this. So I am going to. Uh, I am going to um, desolder them from here and then uh, put on uh, a new set of straight headers that go into the back like that. Um, so yeah, why don't we start with some desoldering and uh, people can fill me in on what, how their weekend went or were they building anything interesting. I must actually show you something before we get started as well. This is what my weekend was. Um, and also I can show you the dogs that uh, we referred to in the the intro. Um, okay, so screen share. So my wife entered an Instructables competition, Colors of the Rainbow. It was kind of a last minute uh, entry, but uh, got in there. Um, a surprise owl cake. So, uh, the surprise is pretty ruined by the the cover photo, but that was the best cover photo we had probably for it. So it's just multicolored on the inside. So yeah, this um, this took a while. <laughs> so she wrote up all the text, and I was just doing the pictures for it. And uh, the Instructables editor is a struggle at times. It's it's really quite challenging. Um, so yeah, that's what I spent a huge portion of last week doing and you'll actually notice if uh, you can see there are my lovely hands on uh, doing some work on a cake so I'm multi-talented um, so uh, and there's the dogs from the sometimes they make an appearance on the stream um, rare enough but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, look at this. Hand model. I was in... I, I There's a Zoolander joke in there too, but... Uh, <laughs> unfollowed. Multi-talent. Not allowed. Trust me, I won't be making cakes anytime soon on stream. Oh my god, I was so tired on Sunday after. It was like... It's a serious amount of work. Um, and then, yeah, just a huge amount of time spent... Uh, spent um then doing the write-up so fun times so this is a vice i got in aldi uh, let's move away from that so yeah if uh i guess if you are anyways uh interested hey thanks a lot for the subscribe blueprint really appreciate it um i don't know i feel bad now getting like shilling out the competition just after somebody subscribed but uh if uh if you are impressed by that cake or whatever or in the write-up for it uh if you want to vote for it in the competition or like it or i don't know i don't normally ask on my own ones but this isn't my one so it's fine it's caslo or kaz being my wife's nickname and low being the first two letters of my second name uh, I suppose I don't need to show that anymore. So this is my vice. Um, I use it for soldering and stuff. It's actually quite good um, for this job. It's a little bit slow to like to adjust or whatever, but other than that, it, it works quite well. Um, yeah, I hope you're doing better. Um, or I hope you're feeling better. Um, Dave is what I mean to say. Um, yeah, I saw you were uh, you retweeted about Spaceballs earlier. Um, I haven't seen that film in a while, but I remember being a little bit underwhelmed by it. Like, there's funny moments in it, but uh, yeah, the vice of knowledge. I haven't actually watched Cl Big Clive in a while. Um, like I do, I do enjoy his videos, but for some reason, just they're not showing up on my uh, YouTube feed uh, really anymore. So they just don't like I don't know happen, or you know, you just miss them. Uh, I didn't get my solar plug. Ooh, you might get a chance to use out those little desolder tools. Um, that I got in a post bag recently. So let's see here now. Let me apply some extra solder. I'm I'm not a good solderer as well. So uh, don't uh, don't learn any solder techniques off me. Well, I guess actually what I would normally do with this, and I may as well just do it now, is um. I, I really don't care about holding on to these, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them. Like, if it was just a straight up pin, you could, like, pull them off. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them, so each pin is then individual, and then uh, I can, I can uh, pull them out one by one after I heat up the... Or am I going to cut them? I'm going to try to cut them. Maybe I won't be able to fit them in. Hmm. No, I'll be soldering. What a disaster. Okay, doesn't matter. Step one, fail. It's fine anyways. Uh, do I have a... Fires will help in this situation, seeing as I don't want to burn myself. Um, Alright, so I'm going to put a... Cut the metal first. No, that's what Dave is thinking. Uh, where is my... Yep, that sounds like a good idea to me. So I might just leave it on the vice, actually. So what Dave is... D yeah... Do you know what I'm gonna do with the I'm gonna do with the 
more proper way, I would say, by just putting a big blob of solder on and then uh, and then pulling it out. That's the more proper way. I think I'm going to have to just put a bit of weight on it now. But as I said, I am um, terrible at soldering, so also this thing is going to be a big heat sink now. There we go. That wasn't too hard. Blob it. Uh, right. Now, solder sucker. Oh, I didn't need those in the end. Ooh, we are going to get to use the the little tools from uh, my post bag there recently enough. The ones that Chris Cochrane uh, recommended. I, he told me how to pronounce his name and said it in his last video, and I still don't know if I uh, <laughs> if I said it right. Um, where are those these older tools? I think they're over here. Yeah, so I didn't really have any time for making at the weekend because of that cake right up. Let's see, it's a pretty small hole. It's probably around the same size as this one, so I'm just kind of testing that out. That one seems alright. So, I've never used this before, but we're trying to see how it goes. Heat it up the pad. Oops. I might need to do bigger than that. It's just to clean up the hole. I could use braid as well, but uh I want to try these things out. Maybe they're this one's too big. Maybe I didn't put them back in in the right order. Oh, I did. Will this one fit? Okay. Yeah. Let me give that a go. So I'm gonna put the solder iron underneath this. Can I adjust this? Is that making it tighter or it's making it tighter? Okay. You just need two uh, right hands for this job, that would be ideal. It's pretty good. Uh, cheeky nine 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 nine. I'm not sure if it is cheeky. Cheeky nine 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 nine. We'll hold on to you. Thank you. This seems to be working very well. So thank you for that. Um, I don't know if you can see that, Irish, but it's. working quite well I would say. Look at that. Yeah I think it's pretty good. So cheeky. Good job cheeky. Now Let's uh, solder in one of these things. So I just want to cut four. It's four. So now I want to solder it so that the 
longer pins are going to the back. Look at that, slotted in. Perfect. <laughs> That's okay with me. You didn't need to watch that. You were, you were the one who told me what to do. It worked out perfectly. <laughs> Which reminds me, cup, uh, um, well, if you're calling the cup, uh, you must be either English or Irish, probably English. Although we do call it a cup uh, as well. Um, let me move this a small bit so the thing isn't in my face. Um, or at least my mom used to call it a copper a lot, so. So. Okay, so I'm just gonna solder up these pins. Don't need a huge amount of solder. This one will take a little bit more solder because it's a ground pad. And that looks pretty good to me. Um Jordy. Ah yes. I have never been to Newcastle. Um I'm right in I'm right in saying that all Geordies are from Newcastle, right? That it's yeah. I'm just I'm a little yeah. Geordies are Newcastle. I'm just a little conscious about like mixing up Tyneside and uh, and being a Geordie or whatever. Um, or Tyneside. Tyneside is Newcastle, is it? Or it's both T Newcastle and Sunderland. Or is that weird side? I c I. I don't know. <laughs> My geography is poor. My geography of England is worse. Um, especially locations. Right, so that's cool. That gets us that. Looks perfectly fine to me. Slots in 100%. Okay, cool. So let's solder up the legs on the Wemos next. We don't need the clamp anymore for that. Let me get a breadboard. Newcastle. Okay. Newcastle is Tyneside. Sunderland would be weird side. Yeah, so it's a Tyne weird derby when Newcastle are playing Sunderland, although that won't happen anytime soon. Um, yeah, that's how my knowledge of uh, geography comes from, is just having some knowledge of football. Um, yeah, so I used the breadboard method when uh, soldering legs onto, uh, onto boards, so I just put, put it in loosely on a breadboard. So that means that they're perfectly straight because sometimes if you just like put them in that they can be a little bit bent over or to one side or whatever it makes it a struggle to put it into uh, put it into um, breadboards but if you put it into the breadboard uh, works perfectly um, just one thing to be a little bit careful about is that you don't leave it heated up for too long also my iron is pretty hot at the moment because I was doing a big bit of soldering at one stage, so I'll just drop it down to 370. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, you don't want to stay too long on uh, legs. You just want to get in and out and do the job. Let's get you right down in close um, and focus you up because that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I would nearly. I would nearly pay someone if they could figure out a way of me, like, not having to mouse use, or mouse focus this, if there was a programmatic way of me focusing this, uh, this, um, webcam, I would be so happy. I looked into it before, and 
I could find a way of programmatically focusing it, but not while it was in use by OW, uh, OBS, only if the program that was controlling it had access to it first. So this is the controls I have. It seems to be a generic Windows one, and I need to manually adjust this focus. But I would absolutely love if I could connect up uh, like that thing we did on last week's stream, actually, the um, macro keyboard. If I could hook up a rotary encoder and I could focus using that, I would absolutely love that. So if anybody has any suggestions on how to make that possible, let me know. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Chicky, I have one, but I've never used it. Um, I bought it for a project and I just never got around to that project. Um, so no, I don't have any experience with it. Sorry. Yeah, as I said, I, I bought one and it's like probably a year ago nearly at this stage now. I think I had planned to make, I was going to try make a Wi-Fi enabled, um, guitar pedal. Um, which is kind of a weird thing to do, but I thought it would be kind of cool if you could like, like there is Arduino guitar pedals, and I thought it'd be kind of cool if you could adjust the effects using your phone. Um, but as I mentioned, never got around to it. That's kind of a, uh, I've missed did a bad job on a few of these here. Just fix them up. It's kind of the problem with AliExpress, isn't it? That like stuff is super cheap, so you have no problem like buying it, but um, like it can take a while to get here. So by the time it gets here, you're kind of moved on to another project or something you had bought before has come in. So yeah, um. Yeah, I've actually I've so many projects kind of uh, ready to go now. I just need uh, time to do them. Time is my biggest enemy when it comes to doing uh, doing stuff. Motivation is normally pretty decent. Um, like it, that's never been a huge problem for me. Like I like. If I was doing a longer project, motivation becomes an issue. But like for something that overall I spend like 10 hours at or whatever, um, that wouldn't be a problem at all. I made a Wi-Fi off of a proper... Um, are you actually playing guitar? No, I can't really play guitar. I just like making pedals for it. Uh, <laughs> the sounds are awful without a proper DSP like a shark. Hey, thanks for the sub, Dev. Uh, really appreciate it. It's three months in a row now. Um, I, no, I, I've made a couple of pedals before. I just like it, but they've all been like, you know, pedals made with passive components and stuff. Um, I was going to make... I was going to try make... Um, what is the there's a kind of a a famous enough Arduino one it's made by an English company actually I can't remember what it's called uh Blitz City DIY if you're familiar with her channel she um uh um she reviewed it no this one would be for Arduinos it's just in the past I have made uh passive pedals just like just like a couple of fuzz pedals actually and a bass fuzz bass fuzz i made a couple of those bass fuzz actually so I, I liked them a lot i thought they sounded great even on a guitar um but uh yeah no this one is uh i can't remember what it's called but there's an arduino one and it's open source and i was just gonna try it out like it the the amp that comes with it is pretty pretty cheap um and I was just gonna see you could have make it with uh, uh, ESP instead of uh, an Uno. And uh, one thing actually that I think is really weird about that that pedal is it's um, 
it's a shield for an Uno. So like when you're s and it has a stomp switch on it. So when you're pressing on it, it's pressing on the Uno like pins, which I, I, I don't know, it feels really weird to me. Why wouldn't it just use a nano or something? That, that would make way more sense. Well, Dave, if you want to keep uh, keep rotating your phone 360 every uh, every month, uh, I, <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, um, yeah. So okay, we have that there. Uh, now the next thing we want to do is we can solder. I, I like to um, I like to put female uh, header pins into my uh, perf board. Um, for projects like this that I probably am going to like recover the Arduino from. I know it's uh, it's pretty cheap, like it's three dollars or whatever, but you know, if you're in a pinch for one, it's not even the three dollars that can be the problem, it's the wait time. So if I, if I uh, like put it on a socket like this, because space isn't really an issue for me, then I can uh, if I need to, I can really easily recover it or just pull it straight out. And uh, how much does the Wi-Fi shield cost? Uh, this uh, this one here is three dollars. Um, this is a full board. Um, it doesn't have as many pins as uh, Uno or whatever, but you can program it pretty much exactly like an Uno. Um, so n nearly all of my projects, I use these. Um, like when it comes time for me to like pick a board to use for a project uh, so I don't have it in properly there uh, the way I work is I might actually move it down to the bottom I'll, I'll see uh, the way I work is I basically say why wouldn't this work well on a, uh, why wouldn't this work well on a ESP8266. Is there any reason I can't use one? So, like, one is it has a bad. Its analog input is is poor. Um, it's it only has one. It's uh, limited to one volt. Um, so between zero and one volt, the Wemos has a built-in voltage divider. So it's on this board, it's limited to zero to three point three volts. But that's still a poor enough range. Um, so like a nano would be better for that sort of stuff uh, although you know something like I've never used one but a teensy would be even better again um, but uh, yeah th there's cheaper ones you can get too um, these little guys um, so they have the same ESP8266 on them but like the price difference between these two is maybe like 30 cent and this one this one's even getting a bit moldy i think from lack of use this one has a voltage regulator and has a usb to serial converter like you can just plug this one in directly and start programming on it well this one um you probably need a special programmer like this guy here um yeah so and it's not breadboard friendly either you kind of need a breakout board or you can hack together, hack together something to break it out. But um, yeah, I, I really recommend those ones. Anyways, uh, okay. So I was thinking about putting it down near the bottom. Uh, I probably also want to put it this side because my. Lock will be my clock will be facing this way. Um, yeah, my clock will be facing this. Way. Ooh, this might be a problem. See, under there, we might have some crossing of streams. Doesn't look like it, but it's pretty close to that cap we might need to separate them uh, we could hmm. 
is one problem about putting things on other sides of boards or whatever. Uh, I could just move it up a bit higher. Move it down a bit lower. Yeah, lower works fine. So I'll just put it down a small bit lower, like that. Um, or maybe this one will move up a small bit, we'll see. Um, so that would fit there. My alarm clock will be facing that way because I sleep on the left side of the bed if you're lying on the bed. So, like, the plug is like back towards the bed, so it would make sense that the wire is coming up from this side. Um, ooh, look at this, it even kind of holds itself up. And then we put the buttons in. Makes sense to put the buttons at the back, right? I just want to kind of get a, an idea of the layout before I... I've never used these right angle buttons before. Mm. Doesn't seem to fit too well into the into the perf board, so I might just bend the legs out a small bit. Let's see, does it fit better? That's a bit better, all right. Yeah. Oops, let's leave that to the side there. Maybe bending out is the wrong option. Maybe I should be bending in. That, that's enough in to get me out though. But I don't know what I should do with it. I think that's fine. I have enough true there, and that's poking up enough there. Um, and I would do the same with the other button up here somewhere. So I, this would be a snooze, and I also want to, sorry, uh, turn off the alarm, and I also want the snooze button, because I think we could do some cool things with the snooze button. So basically, without me touching it at all, it um the two back legs fit in fine between four but the two front legs don't fit in because they fit between three so something needs to give so what i did with this one is i bent out the back legs to fit between five and i think that's kind of how you have to do it right so if i go in to Bend. Yeah, I think I'll just bend it out again. Just do it for me in two. Bend, bend. There we go. Here's my two buttons. They're in fine. And then I'll throw the buzzer down here somewhere. Wherever it'll fit. And the associated buzzer stuff down here then with the the diode for that and uh, the transistor and the resistor for the transistor and then that should be it. Um right Dave, uh good night to you, thanks for joining.
Um, yeah, so that should cover that. And then we have this to fit in. Put the buzzer up near the top. Right, am I happy with the Arduino being there? I could probably move the Arduino up one closer, which means I can move this up one, and a chip is still in the middle of the Arduino. Two give myself more room I could put the I could put the um, seven segment on a stilt basically that might actually be the way to go like if I do female headers like that it'd be pretty big though I could just pull the plastic off the other part I cut, wherever that is, and just put that on as well. And then it would be like a double height component that would, or double height spacer. Kind of have a problem over this side, but it might be all right. Could just, I don't know, glue something. It's just that would get me away from it being in the way on this side. Just that any like things that were soldered over here would wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll just focus on everything else and then I'll worry about how I'm gonna fit the seven segments on afterwards. So I'm just gonna mark just gonna mark the pins that the seven segment are connecting to. It's kinda hard to see, but we'll do they're the ones they're currently connecting to. Right. So let's get soldering done anything in a while so let's uh, solder this guy up so interesting it's too top heavy to just stay up there it's just gonna slip off so I'm gonna use my old pal blue tech some people hate it some people love it yeah, I think I think the double and the plastic thing will work uh, work pretty well. So I'm just gonna put some blue tack on one side here. To I'll put it on both sides actually. I'm just gonna do one side of soldering. So that's gonna hold it in place. Now it's not going to fall off. So I just put a little bit of blue tack around the outsides of it there. Where is the focus point down there? Um, okay, so let's do some soldering. I'm sure this is. Oh, it's gone off. Not even just gone to sleep. Gone off fully. Um, yeah. So, like another thing that I was wondering about, if I needed on um, on an alarm clock build, is if it has Wi-Fi. Like and it sets its time from Wi-Fi and it keeps itself up to date on Wi-Fi. Should you include a real time clock backup? Um like an RTC chip? Because the only scenario where that would be helpful is that your internet is gone for a significant amount of time. Because it will keep some time uh, without internet, 
uh, and I'm sure it'll drift a little bit, but you know, if your internet's gone for like half an hour or whatever, I'm sure it's fine. Or even for a few hours, I'm sure maybe it might wake you up two minutes too early or two minutes too late. But I can't imagine for like a day that there would be any issue, which is just not having Wi-Fi. Because like, if you lose power, you can't run the the seven segment anyways, or the ESP8266, really. Like, you could have a battery backup, but, you know, realistically, not really, unless you had, like, a lithium-ion battery backup. But, um, so I'm just going to do the outside ones. So the four ones on the outside. Um... So yeah, that's one thing I'm kind of wondering about is, yeah, I was wondering was this side down lower than the other side, but I don't think so. Um, like I would be fine without the RTC chip, but if it was a kit and it bothered people that it didn't have the RTC chip, then I would probably add the RTC chip. But the RTC chip is an extra expense or whatever. It makes the kit a bit more complex, a bit more expensive, and things like that. So, your ESP will boot up faster. Well, you could just have um, a check to say, like, if I don't have Wi Fi, you know, reconnect me or whatever. Um, yeah, so you uh, also check in the loop to reconnect. Like if yeah, if you checked in the loop to reconnect, y you would probably solve that problem. Um, like it doesn't it doesn't really bother me to add in an RTC or not add in an RTC. Hey, Sion, how's it going? We're uh, replaying. I'm pretty sure we had this conversation uh, like months ago. <laughs> about whether you should have an RTC in your Wi-Fi alarm clock or not. So the reason I only did the four ones in the corner is because when it comes time to actually soldering like uh, wires to this, it's now easier. I can place the wire beside it and then I can solder everything up together. Um, so yeah. Okay, so that is good there. Uh, they're holding themselves in place. So I guess the next thing is to solder up my little buzzer. Um, I could make that only span three. And that works for me. Um, Yeah, like I, th I just think it'd be fine without one. Like if if you try make the thing as cheap as possible, but then even if an RTC costs an extra dollar or whatever, you need to like you need to allow for buying the RTC and all that kind of crack. So like I was even considering like if I made one that. It, the ESP8266, what I would do instead of like soldering an ESP8266 into the project, that I would have holes for a Wemos and you'd solder a Wemos into the project because like you can't buy, you can't buy a ESP, a micro USB header and USB to serial and the 5 volt regulator cheaper than you can buy a Wemos. It's just not possible so like it saves a lot of complexity and cost if you just take that out and just put a Wemos in instead so yeah uh, an RTC will give you better more accurate clock uh, an RTC without a battery or with an RTC will give you better more accurate clock even if you don't put it in a battery um, 
Yeah, but like if you check every minute for the NTP time, like it's going to be as up to date as it could possibly be really like um you definitely won't have a significant amount of drift um but yeah i don't know okay so i'm putting in my buzzer uh i'm gonna put in my diode which where am i gonna do this now the buzzer is an awkward shape for a perf board Take a look at the other projects. Yeah. Alright, so the diode is going in like this way almost. So the negative end of the diode goes to the positive of the of the buzzer. I actually can't remember what the thinking of all this is, but uh, like if we thought it was a good idea before, it must still be a good idea. Um, okay, so we could solder that up. And we can solder anything we need onto that. Um, yeah, I would argue that if you don't want an always on device, then you probably don't want a Wi Fi enabled alarm clock. Like, if you want to be able to set the time using Wi Fi and like you set, or sorry, set the alarm using Wi Fi and you want it to have features like uh maybe it sends a command to your nest or whatever to turn on turn on your heating that uh if you're getting that kind of an alarm clock then you probably want an always online one where am i going here um yeah i i really doubt it's in the minute range um I'm not I'm not actually 100% sure how often it checks for NTP. Let me just bend this so that it's on the inside. Cuz that's the way it naturally wants to go is out. So it's that's the look all right. Looks fine to me. Um so if I put it on the inside, then we'll have a nice smooth connection. Yeah, so I've bent the legs of the diode back on it's kind of hard to see but the pins of the buzzer are there and there so I'm just gonna put a bit of solder there um, like it's funny um, like we threw together kind of a simple working version of the alarm clock and just had like pretty simple features and a really ugly web interface and stuff for setting the alarm. But it actually was my alarm clock for a few weeks. Um, it actually has been broken for a while now in terms of like my daughter took it apart. Um, and it was really good like it was really handy being down like in the living room like oh i need to get up earlier or whatever and you just throw on the you throw on the alarm or even you know you might be in brushing your teeth or whatever and your alarm starts going off and you're like oh well i can just turn it off from my phone <laughs> like i don't have to go into the bedroom to turn it off so uh yeah it was it was nice um Okay. Right, so that's the diode held in place. I'm hoping that I'm not in the way of my. Nope, still looks okay. Getting kind of close, but we're okay. 
and I might actually put the transistor underneath the Wemos once every 30 minutes. Okay, so it's up to it every 30 minutes. Um, I'd still say it's going to be pretty accurate, but I'm not sure. Maybe an NTP would be more accurate. Um, uh, but like another thing when I was looking before is I didn't find a like a cheap source of NTP chips like I thought they were quite expensive like I I never noticed the clock being wrong or at least significantly wrong like I never looked at the clock and went hey that's way wrong um but I guess I wasn't looking at it too much. Hey, thanks for the follow, Gillette Saucy. Gillette Saucy. I don't know how to pronounce that, but appreciate the follow. Um, I think I'm nearly at two hundred followers now. Hey, Marwich, top of the day to you too. Is that a <laughs> an Irish joke? Top of the morning to you. It would, yeah, like it would take about a day to drift, but it'd also be setting itself right every half an hour, so or every hour or whatever you set the thing to be. So it wouldn't ever drift unless it didn't have Wi-Fi. If it took a day to drift, so like one of the nice things about building up your Wemos up here is that you have room underneath it to uh, put stuff. So I could have probably put the buzzer under there, but it, I thought it might impact the noise that it makes. So if I put the buzzer over here, like if I'm building a case for it or whatever, I can leave a gap. I know that's uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> which I didn't, didn't take any offense by it or anything. Um, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm almost curious as well to people who like join new. Um, how how did you find it? Just from browsing like the creative section, or did you come across it on Twitter or whatever? Um, I'm just sort of always curious how uh, new people join. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna put that there, and I'm also gonna I'm gonna have to find out what pin I want to use now. Uh, Trump tweeted out my stream. He's the best, just all around great guy. No, I'm I'm not the biggest Trump fan though. No. <laughs> uh, 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 see, you see on you bringing bringing me guests. Um, appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I won't go into anything political, but uh, yeah. <laughs> There, I don't know if there are too many people in Ireland who would be a fan, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, let me find the code of this alarm clock. Because uh, I have it here somewhere, because I, I need to figure out what pins I was using for what. Okay, cool. Um, it's good to know my uh, stream information, obviously, was... Uh, Um, I don't know, Sion. In a previous stream, someone recommended putting a diode in, or some information said put a diode in, and I uh, just said I'd put a diode in because I've got like 50 of them that cost a dollar or whatever, so it's absolutely no skin off my nose to put a diode in. Uh, you found me f via EV blog. Yeah, like. I gained like a thousand subscribers that two days or something like uh, and it was funny um, Dave was like pretty or, well, I won't say upset but he was disappointed with how like well the guest videos did or whatever and I think he was probably more disappointed for the people doing the guest videos that like you know so I think my video had like less than 20,000 views and that would be disappointing for uh, an, e an EEV blog video um, 
so I'm just looking through my sketches here. Arduino. I have one called Alarm Clock. That sounds that sounds pretty decent. Um, it's probably old though because it doesn't have any. Ah, here we go. This one called Alarm Clock. And has loads of stuff in it, so this is probably it. Let's take a look. Um, uh, yeah. And yeah, probably don't need that stuff anymore, but we'll leave it there. That was for trying to do Google Maps integration. I never actually finished that off. Um, just to get the alarm to like adjust itself based on your commute to work. But uh, that's fine. So I was using button D two for the D two for the um, turning off the alarm. Um, <laughs> um, I appreciate that, Kevin. Thanks. Uh, no, it was it was cool as well. Like I thought the subscriber number would go up. Okay, after doing the guest video, but it was really cool to see people like comment on older videos, like. You know, so they were actually going back through your like back catalog or whatever. Like, that was a serious boost for like my channel. I spent a year getting to like a thousand, uh, a thousand subs, like literally from January twenty seventeen to December twenty seventeen. It took me to get a thousand subs, and then by the end of January twenty eighteen, I had two thousand subs. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was a weird time. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, why not? Sure, what else am I going to do with these diodes? Uh, these, these are like six years old. I bought them. They're the transistors. Oh, where's the focus point? I don't know. Uh, I bought them maybe even older than six years i don't know i bought them for modding stuff at what i was modding at the time i don't know or why i needed them not sure but they came from my like previous life of working with electronics not with the arduino stuff so according to this i used to have the buzzer connected to d1 so i will continue to have the buzzer connected to d1 um so d1 is up here um, so let's continue to do that. I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a resistor to connect myself to the diode or the transistor. Uh, um, why am I showing you on this screen when I can show you on this screen? Well, you see, oops bit of an earthquake there. If I use more stuff, then I feel less bad about buying more stuff. Um, I don't really have the room to go four in, or which would give me a nice neat resistor, so I'm just going to not do that and give me a weird bendy resistor. Just flatten this side and leave the bend in on the inside. So that's what I mean by bendy. Hey, Doey, how's it going? Um, see on if you remember, we were pointing out the the green Neo Seven segments that live in the world. Uh, Doey is uh, the person who did it. I, c I, I can't quite think of your name at the moment, but uh, uh, yeah, it's not Gavin. I can't remember, but yeah, Doey was the owners of the Green Seven segments. Gary, yeah, Gary, 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 Gary. Sorry, Gary. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty bad with names, to be honest. Like, I'll, I'll remember people and, like, where I remember them from, but not names. Um, do I mess with pies? Not a huge amount. Um, 
I do do a little do do. I do a little bit with them, but uh, not as much as I do with the ESPs. Um, although I definitely do have a few Pi videos coming up uh, on YouTube, I would say. Um, just a few kind of simple projects that uh, like I have a few Pies and I just want to use them up. Um, yeah, so definitely a few. Like even sort of, even if it's not doing anything new myself, but like just showing what you could use a Pi for. Like say for example, even something simple like setting up Pi Hole would be pretty interesting, I would think. Um, I'm sure there's a bazillion videos already for doing it, but uh, eh, why not a bazillion and one? Um, just make sure I'm connecting this up right. Let's So I'm going to put it this way. Because this side is going to go down here. Uh, I'm after missing a huge amount. I'm at a bird box. Super happy about it. Oh yeah, that does sound really cool. <laughs> Use them up like the consumables there. <laughs> I'll be in and out for a little while. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, pie hole is... Yeah, you see, this is why I think it would be useful because, you know, just not everybody knows what things are. So, as far as I know, um, as far as I know, Pi-hole is a custom DNS server for your network. So, what a DNS server, if you're not familiar, and I'm sorry if I'm tech-splaining, I don't know, that's a thing. Uh, if you are, but what a DNS server is, is like a phone book for like internet websites. So instead of you looking up, oh, what's Brian Locke's phone number? Uh, you're asking the DNS server, hey, what's, uh, what IP address will I find google.com on? And uh, it, uh, it returns back your, your server or the IP address of the, of where that website is. And um, so what Pi-hole is, is it's a updating list of, so it's a regular DNS server, but it also has an updating list of what are ads, so web servers. So if my, so when your browser is loading up a web page that has ads on it, so it'll load up google.com, for example, and say there's an ad that goes to ad server.com uh, what it'll do is it'll go to the DNS and go hey what's the address for ad server.com and the DNS will be like doesn't exist so what ends up happening is that you don't get ads anymore and it works for like YouTube videos and everything because you know you definitely don't want to be watching ads on YouTube um, but uh, yeah uh, Chicky, uh, feel free to post your um, video in the chat there. I uh, would be interested in seeing it. I probably won't get to look at it now because I'm kind of busy, but uh, definitely feel like you can, anyways. Um, and then there's somebody else asking about the OBS button. I haven't done anything on it yet. Um, Robert, uh, is it Robert? robot macro um no i haven't done anything on it yet but I, I will get back to it um probably will turn it into a video at some stage um i i did up one thing i actually did do um i haven't shared it out yet is just put up like or i did up a really simple uh diagram and fritzing for uh for it um, but like the wiring is so easy anyways, it's just, just normally I like to do up like fritzing diagrams or, or whatever. Um, right, so that's 
looking pretty nice. Um, it goes like this. So I need this leg to go to here. The second pin in. That's ground. Oh, Colin Hickey. Chicky is Colin Hickey. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. No, sorry. I like. I am very familiar with who you are on like Twitter and stuff. S sorry about that. And maybe on YouTube as well. Sorry, I come across your thing all over the place. Um. Yeah, that that's true. You don't have to block ads on YouTube or whatever. Um. So you like. Ads for me is probably my lowest source of revenue from this sort of stuff. The highest being um, affiliate links to AliExpress by quite a significant margin. Probably followed by, um, like at this stage, probably, I can't go into details on Twitch, but it's probably Twitch after that and then YouTube after that. So, um,. I wouldn't feel bad about uh, blocking videos on YouTube if uh, if they bother <laughs> if they bother you at all. Um, you definitely have permission to block ads on my videos if you want because it doesn't really bother me. In fact, I would go further and say it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, so. And um, yeah, it's funny as well, like, kind of, like, for a good while as well, I didn't have ads on my videos, and I was kind of like, oh, you know, I don't want to put any barrier of entry for somebody kind of finding my channel and seeing, seeing it, like, as in, if I put this video on it, they might be less likely to see me. Um, I don't know if that's the case, <laughs> really. Um, I don't know if that's the case at all, because, like, People are just used to ads on videos that it does, you know, it it's doesn't take a second thought to them, you know. It's just oh, there's an ad that that's fine. <laughs> like, um, if I put this over, I don't know. I was gonna say if I put it over here. So I'm just going to connect this side of the transistor to ground, which is up here, and I'm going to cut that, and I'm just going to strip it manually because I couldn't be bothered getting my wire strippers. That doesn't work with the black anyways. So, although it's pretty short, so I probably should have, but anyways. No, just dirty it. That's fine. Um, let's put it on here. Uh, what was I talking about? The money. Oh yeah, ad skip video. Yeah, exactly. My daughter is not even two, and uh, when we're like changing, changing her and brushing her teeth and stuff, we give her uh, we give her her phone to uh, distract her because she doesn't like getting her brush her teeth brushed normally or without it um she skips ads she is not even to and like she just knows where to press she knows when that button changes to be like not can skip ad in five four three two one it's ridiculous like so if she's skipping ads everybody's skipping ads so i yeah money from ads is no good um yeah, everybody should check out Colin's channel. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna say everybody should check out. Everybody should check out Colin's channel and make their own decision. Cause I've never watched it before. I just subscribed, literally just there, and I'm gonna make a recommendation for everybody to subscribe to Colin's channel on the next stream. I would imagine, but uh, I see a few uh, familiar faces on there, and they look like they're enjoying the stuff, Colin. So I'm looking forward to it, cause I have been looking for more people to watch. You've got the trademark uh, green cutting board, so everything must be solid. But um, yeah, five two five subs is is doing 
doing well. Have you been making videos long or um what it took me a good while to get to that number. Um Yeah. The Twitch aliases fool me sometimes too. What am I doing here? I want to solder I'm just gonna solder this leg. So I'm leaving soldering the middle because I'm definitely gonna need to solder another wire kind of coming back that way and it'll make it a little bit easier for myself if I do that after if I do the soldering of the middle after I have that other wire in place as well because I need to bring ground to um, I need to bring ground to at least the um, seven segment display and I also need to bring it to the buttons I think so it's a pull up resistor so yeah I need to bring it to the buttons as well we could maybe go out that side to bring it to the buttons might be a bit awkward but uh, no, it'll probably be pretty good actually so if I brought the ground that way yeah it's it's really difficult to make videos that often like I went through like dry spells of it too and I still do like uh, for sure I I found that I needed to start making videos as well that suited the amount of time I had to make videos and not just the ones ideally I'd like to make. Like when I started my channel I was really focused on making super short and condensed videos but they took a long time to make um, per like the amount of video that there is but say something like a post bag takes much less time so um hey thanks for the follow risk risk edits or like even i've started sometimes now doing the voiceover as i'm doing stuff and like if i make little mistakes i leave that in um while like my early videos were i, I could re-record the same line like 10 times maybe even more and I did everything after the fact as well so um, like there's advantages to that you can be more concise with what you uh, say oh <laughs> Gary's fixed his name I'll never forget it again now um, yeah you can be more concise in what you say um, and you can think about it and go that doesn't work well or I already said something like that earlier um, but uh, yeah Oh, where did that come from? Oh, it's a the speaker is acting like a magnet. That makes sense. Um, so I don't want to use black from there to there actually because it's not really. It, although it's kind of ground, it's switched ground. So I don't want to like later on try connect more black to it. But um, yeah. Do you do you enjoy making the videos, Colin? Um. Like, I'd be the first to say that the actual making of a video, I don't hugely enjoy. Like, I like it fine, but not, like, I'm not in love with the editing process whatsoever. Like, I'm happy when I make a video and I'm happy with it. Like, as in, I get satisfaction from, like, oh, I've done a, I've done an okay job with that, or... What I really like is when people like the videos, like if, you know, you get a lot of people commenting on it saying, oh, this is great, or like, this is really interesting to me. Like, that's, I love that. That's my bread and butter. But like the actual process of making the video, not a huge amount. Um, I love making the stuff and coming up with the stuff and programming the stuff all that's great but the actual just making of a video not not as much no um and i was just always curious what other people thought about the process of it and i suppose that goes for anybody who uh is making videos um 
or content in general if they want to uh, chip in on that. Oops. Maybe I should be using my wire strippers. Um, one thing I found about doing the videos was that it increased me. Uh, it increased the uh, likelihood of me finishing a project. Like it did increase the amount of time it took, but like previously I'd be kind of doing stuff and I'd get like the fun thing out of the way and I just would never get it to like the a hundred percent like if you're familiar with that kind of saying and I think it's all projects it doesn't necessarily need to be anything in particular that the the last 10 percent is 90 you know takes 90 percent of the time or whatever like they're the unfun things that you just don't want to do or whatever you've figured out the challenge it's not overly fun to you anymore uh, i might need to solder that in just yet because i want to uh oh, that should get me out um use red here did i use red how did i use oh, i used five volts Can i use five volts for this buzzer to make it louder um, thanks uh, Gavin I hate connecting wires um, which would make you think that I'd uh, hurry up and make a development or a PCB at this stage but uh, I, I will very soon in the next uh, in the next month I will definitely have ordered a PCB Hundred percent. I even installed Eagle on my, uh, even installed Eagle on my laptop and was uh, messing around with it. But uh, soon, 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 soon. Uh, so let me. So I'm bringing five volts from one leg of the buzzer um, over to five volts, which is over here. Just leave it a little bit longer. I'm gonna cut it, and then I'm going to strip it. Uh. Oh, cool. Are you going to um? That is a fruit wire. Yeah, it's a hookup wire spool set. Um. Adafruit sent me that in exchange for me doing a write-up, a learn guide, and I still haven't done that learn guide, so uh, I feel bad about it, but it's here, <laughs> so I'm not going to not use it, but I would wholeheartedly recommend it. It's it's good stuff. Um, even just the box that it's in is nice. Like, it's a... Uh, like it's a good way to have your wires stored so I I give it my full recommendation um, are you gonna go with the JLCP uh, JLPCB PC JLPCB um, offer they contacted me before as well um, but I haven't done any board design yet so I'm not gonna take them up on it at the moment anyways um, I was actually kind of thinking as well that uh, for the first time me ordering a board I was thinking maybe I would not um, get sponsored by them uh, because like I, I know like Sion has ordered off them loads of times and uh, I think he's had a cup that's my cat um, I will have to add that to the intro. Go away, cat. Um, I think he has had one or two problems, but like they've resolved them for him, so there, there has never been an issue for him. And now I think there's a sponsored video coming up, but I've never had a personal experience with it, so I would feel weird getting sponsored by them without having used them myself first. So I will probably be a regular customer before I do anything in terms of being sponsored. 
um, just because like I can't really recommend it if I've never used it like normally myself because say for example I think when they sponsor you the you know they send everything with DHL shipping like you don't know if they're prioritizing your order like over other people's at fabrication time so does it change the speeds that things come at so it's just kind of a like maybe for the first time I would uh, just buy it because you know it's not overly expensive anyways so um, yeah like when when they initially offered me it I was like oh cool like I better go figure out something to like do and I just never um, I just never uh, I haven't found the right project yet like I'll like if I turn these into a PCB and I probably will I will I'd say 95% chance that I'll use them but I don't think I'm gonna get it sponsored I'm pretty certain I won't for the first for at least the first time like the other thing as well is like I don't know it's just like uh, there's something I feel a little bit weird about with getting sponsored for like I don't know like it, it there'd have to be something like really in it for me and the the value of the board isn't enough so I, I would need to like look for money off them too just because like if I'm like it costs me like whatever fifteen dollars to buy a board delivered off them so like that's not enough of a sponsorship for me to spend my time putting their names on stuff so I'd have to look for money too and then that's kind of going into a weird scenario for me and also there's tax implications of it and just weird things like that and I'm just not a hundred percent sure if it's worth it for me um, so that's that is my story with uh, JLPCB that nobody asked to hear but uh, this is the beauty of streaming you have a soapbox and you may as well use it um, But, uh, yeah. Now, but if some company wants to send me a 3D printer, I will gladly accept their offer. Um, just want to make sure nobody's giving out to me. No. Um, I will gladly accept their offer. Because, like, say, for example, if Gearbest or Banggood offered to send me something like that, I've used Gearbest and Banggood before and like I've been happy enough with it. I'd use them again. I just they're not as cheap as they're not as cheap as um AliExpress, that's why I don't use them now. But I, I'd have no problem using them again. Um so if they offered to sponsor me I would probably take it. Sorry, if they offered to sponsor me something that I wanted to get, like if they just offered me an Arduino board or whatever, they're like, no, <laughs> because that's like, I could just buy them myself. Like I'm not going to just take a sponsorship for the sake of being sponsored. They really have, like, reached out to, like, there's so many people, like, I'm, I'm curious to who's left that doesn't know about them, <laughs> like, um, they really have gotten everybody, like, even, you know, I'd say their, uh, I'd say their sponsorship of Great Scott must be expensive, and if it's not, he's doing business wrong. Because, like, he has a huge maker channel that, like, a huge amount of people look at. So, you know, he should be looking for big money, and I'm sure he is getting big money. 
Seems like a smart guy. Um, where am I goggles to her? Um, so that was like another reason why, you know, I kind of wanted to to review the stuff for myself first without getting kind of like special treatment. Because even like there was a video recently um, of a guy who was sponsored by JLPCB and he had like all over the video that it was um, like there's free shipping on your first order. And that used to be an offer that they had, but at the time his video came out, that wasn't true anymore. And, uh, like, but he didn't know that for himself because they probably, when they first contacted him, said, like, oh, this is the, the deal or whatever. And, uh, like, I guess he probably didn't use the service himself, so he ended up in that scenario where yeah so i don't know just sits me with me weird um i'm gonna stop talking about them now though because <laughs> they're not even paying me and uh i'm giving them prime time on twitch um not exactly prime time uh but yeah, no, AliExpress is my main, uh, the main place I, I buy my stuff now. I just find it the cheapest. I've been happy enough with, um, like, kind of, uh, is quality the right word? Probably. Uh, I've been happy enough with the stuff that I've got, like, as in that the quality was what I expected, or if there was any issues that it was resolved. Uh... I find their app pretty good. Um, I find it like yeah, I find it much easier to use than eBay in terms of like keeping on track of, like oh, it, has that thing come yet? And you know, they kind of let you know in pretty good time that that uh, like your window to complain about something is running out, while eBay don't seem to tell you at all, and it just like whatever <laughs> um yeah i actually would love a good set of um of silicone wires did where did you get yours uh colin i'd be interested to pick up some it's kind of a hard thing to buy actually wires or at least a hard thing to buy cheaply because it's expensive to get them uh, shipped from china um but yeah silicone ones would be cool Alright, so there's my buzzer connected up. Um, I guess it would be worth checking that that works. Um, so it should be connected. Oh, if I don't have some parts of it soldered. That would be a help, I suppose. What else do I need? I need ground for the... for the s display. Definitely don't need that anymore. So let's solder that up. The middle leg of the transistor, that's not going to be connected to anything else. So let me finish soldering that up. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Do you do um, do you do affiliate links on your stuff? Um, because if you don't, then I would. Um, I think it's uh, I think it's a it's a good way of um, I think it's a good way of uh, a fair way of like kind of getting rewarded for um, for the videos or whatever in terms of like you provide links to the stuff you like I mark it with a star if it's an affiliate link and put a thing to say like affiliate link yeah like star equals affiliate link or whatever um so like i try to be clear about it i'm definitely not trying to have a 
trick anybody into it and uh, yeah if they buy it then you get your whatever percent and Aliexpress actually give a pretty good one that's eight percent so uh, the problem is that eight percent of an, a dollar item is eight cent so it's it's more of a volume game than a big money game but uh yeah yeah like i i think that is completely fair like and i wouldn't i wouldn't feel bad about that whatsoever i i almost feel it's a waste when i look at links that aren't affiliate <laughs> linked um like it's just kind of like i wouldn't mind this being an affiliate link i guess the only thing is that affiliate links kind of track you i guess what's going on here this is uh not soldering too well but i guess i was trying to stick away from it because i was uh because i had a small amount of solder so let me start up here this flowing and flow flow i don't know if i'm focused anymore no i'm really not uh, I got confused with the affiliate links because the site says they're only valid for 15 days. Does that mean if I buy from your link after 15 days? Um, I think that in the app, so there's a there's a link in the app, isn't there, that like uh, says, like refer a friend or something, and it creates a link. I think they might be 15 days. But you can sign up for their affiliate program where you get your links from a different website. Portals that AliExpress.com or something along those lines. And I don't think those links expire. Hey, unexpected maker. How's it going? We're talking affiliate links. Um I don't think I don't think my ones expire using the portal's website. Cool. Uh, thanks for the link, Colin. I'll open that and then I'll have it there. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's you can buy individual reds. And you get free economy delivery. That's actually that's a pretty good price. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you just get you can get lucky. I suppose it depends on what the product is. Um, as I said, they do uh, better for me. Yeah, that earn by sharing. No, that's not their affiliate program. That That's pretty new, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure that's in just in the last... I think they brought that in in the last like couple of months. But like I've been using their affiliate program for a while, so um, I think what you just need, unexpected macro, is a few more post bags. Uh, they're the ones that increase my uh, increase <laughs> increase the. Oops, sorry, for rocking the camera there. Um, like it's funny, you can see a noticeable like increase in the amount of traffic the affiliate program has for me when uh when i do a post bag um and it's also funny you can just like see the stuff that's being bought oops is uh <laughs> is uh is the stuff that you recommended or whatever so like you can see i don't know well obviously it is but yeah, i don't know still kind of interesting i also find it interesting to just like randomly see that somebody's kind of like bought the stuff from like one of your videos in terms of like say like i might go look at my affiliate portal now and see oh somebody watched my a tiny video uh because uh you know they've bought the stuff for an a tiny programmer um I know. I, I I have no idea why your affiliate program doesn't do better, Sion, to be honest. Because like yeah, you're 
maybe maybe my affiliate links on post bags don't do as well as I thought. So I've actually started to tag them differently, so I'm gonna know in the future which is which. So like just regular videos are, are gonna have one tag in like the reports and then the the um post bags will have a different one, so Yeah, maybe like maybe you do buy a lot of chips and stuff like that. Four dollars. Yeah, no, that's uh, that could be better. All right, I would say. Um, okay, I think I will need to do the the raising up thing. Um, I think I think you could be right. That could be the problem. Like, is in with the post bags, I buy a lot of modules and like boards and stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess the majority of my affiliate links would be for stuff for like doing a, a particular project. Although I'm always like really curious to to think like how many. Like when you release a video, and this goes for everybody uh, in terms of like when someone does a video with a guide for stuff, how many people actually make the stuff that you've done the guide for? Like, isn't. Like, so some of my bigger projects, I haven't seen a huge amount of vi or like pictures of people finishing them, but like maybe they don't share them or like, say. So, the commute checker project like I saw a couple of shares of people who had made similar ones and stuff and you know that they were sharing it with me to say hey I made your thing thanks a lot or whatever but like is there a load of them out there that they aren't sharing you know or like is it a case of like say out of like that video maybe has or that instructable has a load of views like you know what percentage of people actually make the stuff at the end of it then so I'd be curious um, yeah that's that's good going 30 30 dollars is better than a smack in the face um, I'm the same I <laughs> like Somebody sent me a link to, oh, this guy does good post bags, and I was like, no, I'm not watching it, because I don't want to buy more stuff. Because you just see the things, and you're like, oh, that'll be useful, or oh, that'll be cool for a project, or that'll be, and I'm just like, no. But good news, I'm going to probably, I have enough stuff to make another post bag, so I'll be making a post bag uh, probably this week as well. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to happen. Uh, ugh. That's a bit of a problem. I'm kind of thinking if I center the seven segment display, this wire is in a bad spot. Can I move it maybe? I left a little bit of slack on it. Oh yeah, it's fine. Move it off to the side there. I think I'm going to try to get the buzzer working and then see how we're doing for time. Maybe get the seven segment working then as well. We'll worry about the buttons some other time, maybe. We'll see. See how we are for time. So I think that's okay. It's connected to D1. Don't see any shorts. It's kind of crappy, but it'll do. Um, It's funny what, like, it's funny the things that do well for you and the things that don't do well for you. Like, I was fully convinced that my Zelda chest project was going to do really well. I was like, this is my best video, I'd say, in terms of, like, it's something cool. It spans multiple different interests, you know, it gets the gamers, it gets the 3D printing people, there's Arduino stuff in it. Uh, I thought it was a nice concept of putting like 
mixing wood with a 3D print. Um, I thought the using the I thought using the um, reed switch was like a nice method of handling the of handling like it playing the music based on it the chest being opened that video has not done well it's done okay like i i would consider a video doing well if it has more views than subscribers than i have subscribers and because like i pushed that video hard it was tweeting about it all the time it got shared by like uh it got shared by um Hackster it made the front page of Instructables and it just didn't do well. No idea what happened to it. And uh yeah, that video just did not do well. And then I've other videos where like they've done really well. <laughs> like there's one I have on flashing a Bluetooth module with HID firmware. And that thing is just like the gift that keeps on giving. It's just always got a like that is my most viewed video uh time wise by a mile like I don't think it's the video with the most views but watch minutes that is my most viewed video um okay so I don't see any smoke so that's always a good sign so let's see if we can get this buzzer buzzing um Share my screen. Uh, let's open up a new one. Um, let's see, ESP8266 passive buzzer. Controlling a buzzer. I need to bring in the tone library, do I? We'll use the tone function. Okay, so it's built in with Arduino. So maybe I can just pull in uh, examples. Is it analog? Digital tone melody. That's on an eight ohm speaker. Yeah, we can give it a go. See what happens. Uh, where is? I guess eight is the pin. Yeah, eight is the pin. So for me, this is D one. And this is D1. I have no idea what this is going to do, but sure. If it works, it works. <laughs> if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so we're going to say we must D1 mini. So I just grabbed this from the examples. Uh, do I not need to set it as a output? I don't know. These don't have it set up as an output, so... Maybe the tone library looks after that for you. Makes sense. Um, I cannot see anything you guys are saying. Um, yeah, what? I think my name is Witness Me Now on Instructables. I probably should change that actually. Um, yeah, it is Witness Me Now. Witness Me Now is like a hangover from like, you know, it's my online name since I was like 15 and I kind of don't. Okay, cool. So <laughs> that worked. Uh, I don't know if you could hear that all right, but let me bring it up a bit closer to you. Um, so this would make a nice alarm actually too. Um, yeah, so that works all right. Um, cool, so let's hook up the display now. 
We're on a roll. So I am going to try the double spacing method. Um, I should change my profile picture to uninstructables to be one with a beard, is it? Um, I'm too clean, too, too clean cut there. Look at that youthful guy. That's pre-children and YouTube channels and all sorts of stuff. Um, that's the Zelda chest project that I was talking about. Um, like, you know, it's done fine. But like I said, the simple Wi-Fi controlled car has as many views as it and that like took me no time whatsoever. My most viewed instructable is, so that's the HID one, that has loads as well. My most viewed instructable is the Wi-Fi manager one, uh, I think, 41,000. And then send notifications from your phone from an ESP is 40,000, which is, yeah, the, um, those, d did you put that up on instructables, actually, see on the unexpected eyes? That was a cool project, all right. Um, I know you talked about putting that up on Instructables. I remember you hating the. I remember you <laughs> hating the um, the editor. So I'm just uh, uh let's put it back to the desk. I'm just putting this on here. Um, yeah, one thing actually that I was thinking about as well, like that project did like. I've never seen another project do as well on Hackster as that uh, unexpected make or unexpected eyes. Um, but one thing about Hackster is if you're using an Arduino board, so like if you um, if you uh, like one of the things you fill out on a Hackster profile is your uh, is the parts that you used. Like if you've an Arduino board set in that. Um, I'm pretty sure it, um, where can I get this off here? Uh, I'm pretty sure that also posts on the Arduino hubs page then as well. And, uh, like, I guess you probably get a pretty decent boost of, uh, traffic from there then as well. There's too much solder to get that off. I'll just grab some more from the bin. one though that you ended up just kind of putting the video up on it or something I have a funny feeling that that was what you ended up doing with it or something yeah like there's some that if you, if you just don't get picked up by if you don't get picked up by them, like featured by them or whatever, like they'll just do nothing. Like this video did quite well. I, I did okay, at least, and it did quite well on Reddit, like as in people enjoyed it. And that is like 305 views, so. I don't know, I've, I've, had, uh, I've had times like that for sure. So I have an extra layer there, and I'm kind of thinking I could stick another layer here so it kind of balances out the fact that it's uh, it's lifted up so I mightn't even need that but it's a little bit wobbly without it so if I had the if 
can also use my best friend, Mr. Blue Tech. Hmm. Yeah, uh, like sometimes though, sometimes I think those kind of restoration of barbecue ones or whatever is you know you'd be surprised like isn't that's interesting to people in terms of they have a barbecue out the back or whatever that they're like oh i must fix that at some stage and you're like oh that's how you do it or whatever so this is probably going to be in the way now but uh not uh, helping. The blue tech is fine, but the the blue tech is fine, but the little header, the extra little header is not uh, not doing anything for me. Um, that's not too bad. If I'd probably put something physical there, maybe. Oh, the LED displays. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they t did they take it down for the fact that it didn't... I don't think you even put text in it, right? Put in the blue tech. Always use blue tech. Always. Somebody gave out to me on David Watts' channel for saying I like to use blue tech. Uh, I like to use blue tech for soldering. They're like, if you're soldering properly, you you never need to use blue tech. And I'm like, I don't know. Look, works for me. Um, there, that's pretty level. Uh, I probably need to lift it anyways. <laughs> now, this is going to be a fun solder. Hey, thanks for the follow. Uh, I'll put the plastic. I tried that. Uh, it's... It would normally be okay, but it's the fact that there's like uh, stuff soldered there already, um, is causing a problem. Uh, that's fine. So I'm just gonna solder it in. No, I'm not gonna solder it in. I want to. Uh, what am I gonna do here? So I need to, I guess I'm going to need to solder kind of See, I need to um, I kind of need to solder these Like if I have a wire and I extend it through this side I'm not soldering those things together anymore, so uh, One thing that they've changed recently as well um, is uh, they you used to be able to enter your instructables into multiple competitions and that is no longer the case that uh, you can you can only enter your instructable into one competition and uh, I kind of have uh, I've kind of mixed feelings about that in terms of I think it's fair that you can only win one competition um like there's say if if you write up something and you win a competition or even win a prize in it like i think it's fair that it, that rules you out of other competitions because like there were some scenarios where somebody did up a good instructable and the one tree competitions and it's kind of like like it, the enjoyment that they got out of winning tree competitions would be significantly less than the enjoyment of tree people winning competitions. Do you, do you know what I mean? In terms of like, it's it's the law of diminishing returns that, uh, you know, everything you start deriving less enjoyment from the more of it you have, including like money 
Like if you made, if I gave you a million dollars, you'd be like, wow, a million dollars. Well, I don't know, your financial situations, maybe a million dollars is nothing to you. But you'd probably be like, wow, a million dollars, this is amazing, this changes my life. The second million doesn't change your life as much. So you derive less enjoyment from everything. So if you win one Instructables, you'd be super happy about it. But if you win three Instructables, you'd be like, yeah, you might be happy about it, but uh, but the problem with that is that you can't. The, a lot of the uh, a lot of the competitions run at the same time. I think I'm gonna need to do something like this, in terms of like um, in terms of uh, like soldering to it because you know if I poke it through and it's coming through the other side it's kind of no use to me like I could drill a hole and it and poke it through here and then pull it back down but I, I don't know if I'm bothered I might just do this um, but uh, yeah so because the instructables are run at the same Time. Do I have more blue tack? Um, that you might know a person has won a competition or whatever. Um, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. I hope. Did I leave it long enough? I might get out the actual wire strippers for this one. Because it's already soldered down to the board. Let me try that. So I think it was Gavin suggested I strip it long. Where are we now? Come on. So what Gavin is suggesting is that I go out Let's just unstick myself from there Go out like this And then loop it back down in uh, And it up here. Okay, this is for a clever trick. If I can get it through the hole. Huh? Nice one. That uh, worked pretty well. So let's uh, do the rest of that. So the next one beside it is uh, VCC. And VCC uh, for this is 3.3 volts. Let's I presume that's probably long enough. It's way too long. Let's use the wire strippers now that we have it here. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of a weird scenario too now as well. Like, I don't know. Like sometimes you have something that applies perf uh, perfectly for um, that's not enough. Um, applies perfectly for a competition and y you can't enter it because like you released it two days before the competition opened or anything. Like, isn't it's kind of a weird scenario to have, but uh. Yeah. Um, okay, so same thing here. So I'm poking it out, bending it. I have it nice and long, and it's flexible, so I don't need to use that thing as much. 
Um, but as I was saying earlier on, the Instructables editor is not good. Um, I think this is magnetized now, and I don't know how or why, but uh, like if you've ever used the the Hackster one, like it is significantly better, I would say, than uh, let's push this down than the Instructables one, but. Like, Sion has had good luck on Hackster in terms of like the views he got from posting on there. I have not really, like, I definitely have not gotten the same amount of traffic from Hackster as I have from Instructables for sure. So, I guess it's kind of. Your mileage may vary, or whatever. Um, just nice little pop that. Yeah, cool. You should definitely uh, send them on when you do, um, Gavin. Uh, uh, especially like uh, on Twitter or whatever. I can can retweet or whatever works for whatever works for you um i'd definitely be interested to see them as well though yeah like i every time i'm writing up a long instructables or working on a long instructables i'm like or any write-up i'm like i hate this i hate this i hate this i hate everything about this just i i just hate writing up things <laughs> It's just, I never liked it in school or anything. Let me get the focus back on this thing. Not too bad. Um, okay, I just want to find out what pins I was using in the alarm clock. I was using pin D6 and D5 for clock and DIO. So DIO is D5 and D5 is the fourth one in down here. Let's use green for that. this long enough but we'll see um yeah that that can be a pain too um what is handy like what i try to do is um i try to run the webcam as much as possible throughout sections or whatever so i have kind of a source of videos I can just take screenshots of of the videos um where did I say this one was going d5 yeah dio is d5 yeah uh I can take screenshots of the videos so I have kind of a source of them but like this setup is so useful for that because like me throwing on like, and the fact that it's connected to my PC which has like a huge amount of storage in terms of this like I, I'm not filling up memory cards for a camera or whatever that I can just leave this recording and they're like the biggest issue with me leaving it recording is the fact that I have like large amount of video files to go through then um, so like and the other thing as well because the webcam is up kind of out of the way it doesn't really like impact my ability to work on stuff in terms of like it's it's all the same to me to work on stuff with it recording or without recording um 
So yeah, if if you do plan to make um, if you plan to make uh, a lot of content, I would say the m most valuable piece of information I think I can give is make whatever your setup is make it as easy to do as possible like is in make the amount of time on setup to be as little as possible and then you would be more likely to do to make more stuff I would say and it goes without saying uh, so this is gonna be the fourth one in one two three four E. I mightn't actually do this yet though. Might wait for uh, uh out there somewhere. I'll wait till I do the other one. No, I'd want to do this one first actually. Um because the other one will be going over it. I just want to double check that that's right. D five. Yep. Looks all right. Let's bend that way. Ready to go. So we've got one left to do. Um. Do you capture that using OBS? Yes, OBS is. I record pretty much everything with OBS. Um, I was using Logitech's webcam software to record for a while, but uh, OBS is uh, what I use now for everything. Um, uh, I use a software called uh, Active Presenter, and it is like you will not find anybody like making proper videos or movies or anything with this um it's a glorified uh well, sorry it's not a glorified it's like if powerpoint and a video editor had a baby it's it's very like powerpoint sort of it, it's it's really easy to use um would be my main selling point for it and it's uh, it's free um so I would, I'd recommend trying it out. Um, like, it, it suits my style of video a lot. Low production value <laughs> videos, um, but like it, it is, it is good for annotating. Um, it is good for annotating videos. So like putting in like text or whatever. It, it is like. When you use it, you'll kind of see what I mean about the the PowerPoint aspect of it. Kind of mangle that a little bit, but it's fine. Um, yeah, I, I I like it. It's a little bit of a memory hog, I would say, but aren't they all? And the preview that it does doesn't play back as well as the actual video does so like try it out and export a video to video yeah export a clip to video before you write off saying like oh this is the quality of this is terrible um yeah so i i um i I capture my desk with Active Presenter most of the time, but I have done it in the past with OBS. I'm not sure why I don't. OBS, OBS outputs a more efficient file size for sure um, than Active Presenter because there's I had a few clips that had um, that I had left recording for like hours. And like active presenters files were like like two hundred gigs <laughs> or something. Um yeah, so uh while the OBS ones were, were nowhere near that length. Um Did I see Mike Swan? Mike, are you not going to Italy? Like 
today or tomorrow is it um you should be packing my friend it's a pity that you're leaving like the best weather that we've had ever um but uh that's the way the cookie crumbles i guess we'll we'll enjoy the good weather for you don't worry um that doesn't look too bad once I can close the ESP down. Yeah, and I think the buttons I should might be able to connect up the top as well, so it won't be an issue. Gotta charge everything. Um, bring a few power banks with you. Yeah, that should be fun. Can you speak of the lingo? Um, we went to uh, I went to Italy once before. Went to Sicily for like a week and then spent got the ferry across to Naples and spent like one night there. Um, man, the food is so good. <laughs> um, yeah, they drive like absolute lunatics. Though I'm sorry if there's any Italians on the on the stream, but you're you're crazy the way you drive. It was it's it's funny. Like me and my wife remember that uh, trip so differently. She was like, oh, "I was so lovely." Uh, I'm like, yeah, it was lovely for you. You didn't have stressful driving to go with. we've no internet oh my god uh are any of them on tree because uh well actually no that's a thing of the past the sure you get free roaming now or whatever with everybody but uh that time when i went to sicily i bought uh a three uh sim card in Ireland, pay as you go one, topped it up by 20 euro and just used the data over there because they had, they have that Rome, or sorry, they had Rome like home. So anywhere they had a tree network, you could uh, use your minutes and uh, data and everything and it wouldn't cost you anything. This one is not playing too nice. The rest of them are connected pretty well with this one. It's just being a jerk. That's it, it'll be fine. Let's see what we get on. Um, oh, true that. Um, yeah. What age are your um, What age are your boys like? Yeah, I've never been to Lake Garda. Um, yeah, we're kind of saving at the moment, so we're not. Uh, don't think we're planning any foreign holidays this year. Eleven and seven. So are they mad into Fortnite? Is that what kids are into these days? Um. Or what's the current uh? What's the current craze? Probably shouldn't have started with this one. This one. Yeah, where we are. I've been reliably formed that uh, Fortnite is the main thing. Uh, yeah, Overwatch. I actually play a bit of Overwatch myself. Um, I'm a Reinhardt main. 
and by that I mean I can barely play anybody but Reinhardt. I'm I'm okay with Reinhardt though. Um, I'm pretty happy that uh, I'm finally gonna get my golden hammer after this season ends. Like I'm pretty close to getting it, and uh, like I'm only a few hundred points away, or so, or no, I'm like fifty points away, or something. I placed in gold in competitive, so I'll uh, I'll get my golden hammer finally. Uh, I, oof, some of these are dodgy, dodge city looking. Could solder the far side as well. If we can get the wires to bend back down. Mm, nah, that's fine. Put on my glasses and go snip, snip, snip. I leave them here. I haven't actually played Titanfall really. Uh, uh, if if you find it a bit fast for you, Reinhardt is uh, is a good uh, a good hero to play because you don't need to uh, you don't need to be too fast for him. He's more technical. Than anything like is and you don't need to have like crazy button combos or anything like that or even like your timing of different stuff doesn't need to be too great um i'm a pretty aggressive reinhardt player but i think one suggestion i would have when you're starting off is to like not charge all the time only charge when it's appropriate but as I said, I'm a super aggressive Reinhardt player, so don't listen to me. Um, okay. It's a little bit... Uh, fine. Stick something underneath it to uh, raise it up. Uh, more blue tack, probably. Um... Yeah, I'll just put a bit more blue tech in there for a minute. Uh, I also need to solder in these. Uh, one thing that I'm after kind of doing is uh, snooker myself a little bit. It's gonna be hard to solder anything to those uh, to those pins now that the seven segment is on, but. Uh, will manage, I'm sure. If I have to, I can bring the buttons across to this side as well. There's a bit more, bit more room. We're still going. I said to my wife that I'd probably do a short stream because I was really tired, but uh, I don't know. I haven't felt too tired since I started though, so. Um, but yeah, I should finish up after this, but if I, if I solder in one button, then I could have a working alarm clock again. Although I need to fix up the buzzer code or replace the buzzer code, so I might just I might just get the display working and then leave it at that. I would think. So, ugh, it's pretty horrible. There we go. That's better. What are you looking at here? What other uh? So I I play not a huge amount of games now to be honest. I play um I play PUBG uh with friends a lot. I think that is it's mostly to be honest I enjoy I I'm pretty bad at PUBG. Um but uh mostly I enjoy um like just hanging out playing the games level another light this side um like just jumping on the discord and hanging out and playing like uh, i wouldn't really care a huge amount what games i was playing um ooh, i'm bridging stuff here uh, back back pretty sure i still have a bridge here 
I'll do is I'll cut them because I think the fact that they're long is not helping me here. Um, I play a decent amount of pro evolution soccer as well. That's kind of my like not pink kind of a game or if I was looking to unwind a bit more or whatever. It's um yeah, I've been playing that for years, so like I'm playing the the latest one, but I've been like I I get the new Pro Evolution every year and play a Master League in it. I start with the I don't know if anyone's familiar with Pro Evolution, but I start with the default team, so the Rainies and the guys like that. I normally pick a uh, a second division team to use as well so I uh, like don't take away uh, a team like as in so if I picked Liverpool or whatever that I would uh, that I don't uh, take you know then like Firmino and Salah and all those people would be free transfers and yeah I'd prefer to just leave them in the game so yeah, that's what I do with that. Uh, oh, what am I doing here? Um, I was about to take that off, but no, I need that. Um, okay, so let's try this out. And hope that it works because it will be awkward to fix if it doesn't. It's nice that that still works, anyways. With no shorts like that. Uh, ugh. Uh, I guess I could just upload this code. Um, Well, it doesn't have the Wi-Fi out here. I have a secret .h, but I don't have the Wi-Fi in it. For, oh, that's because I have Wi-Fi Manager. No, I'll just in, install an example. Let's take a look. Uh, well, I guess I could just install this and set up the Wi-Fi Manager stuff. No 4K on free, that is uh, not an issue for me. I stick to 1080 because, um, like I was saying earlier about like doing whatever makes your process the easiest, the webcams help with that a lot for me. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> Time to go clear out that map ski. Although it looks pretty fake. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. HJK, that looks pretty fake. Yeah, I'd say that's fake. HVB, yeah, that's definitely fake, right? <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah, I'd love to see the stats on how people watch it on your stuff. See on like it it looks it looks great, like but I don't actually have a TV capable of displaying four K or a monitor even. Like the this one over there of two monitors is a fourteen forty P monitor. Um so that's the closest I have for it, but uh I guess that's not probably not typical either but I'd, I'd just be curious like to be honest I watch most YouTube on my phone too so uh, um, yeah one of the guys sent a message like 15 minutes ago saying he'll be online now done uploading I don't 
I like the way that has nothing on it. Didn't I used to show something on it? Yeah, it oh, there it's in conf. Let's get my red tape. Ooh, a spare bits of red tape here. I'll recycle a good piece. That's us so. Let's take the plastic that is on it off. the red plastic on instead. I just have some spare red tape left over from when I was using it for something else so probably should get some fresh stuff but I, I don't know where it is <laughs> so rather than that. So uh, TV is the biggest viewing platform. That's interesting. Uh, I have 393 dropped frames. Mike, I don't know when they're from. I know I lost some earlier, but that's not a lot, so I don't know. Chromecast is 47. Oh. Uh, no, it could be my internet mic because it just went pretty bad there. Um, I think we're kind of done anyway. So the display works, the buzzer works. Uh, the buttons are not connected up at all now. They're just sitting, sitting there at the moment. But uh, yeah, so I'll connect up the buttons. I probably won't bother do that on a stream uh, just because there's so little left to do in it and uh, yeah maybe next step for this would be to make a case and that could be my alarm clock <laughs> yeah 40 th that doesn't make any sense 33 plus 23 plus 47 it seems like a lot ah, okay yeah yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, de I definitely lost a few frames there um, shortly after you mentioned it. Yeah, so I think I'll finish up with that anyways. Um, yeah, I think I, I like this board um, or this project. Uh, I think it would be nice to turn into a PCB. Um, why not? I guess would be the main <laughs> main question. Um, yeah, and have a little case to go with it, and yeah, could be pretty cool. Uh, unexpected maker, which your uh, iOS preference be gone. Um, yeah, uh, thank you everybody for joining. I'm gonna finish up there. Um, Appreciate you all coming out. If you haven't, go vote for my wife on Instructables. I have no problem with saying that about her stuff. I would never say it about my own. But, um, oh, geez, let me find a link to it now. I know I sent it out once already, but sure, it was, might as well have been a million years ago at this stage. It was about three hours ago. Um, geez, a lot of people threw in a through an uh, entry at the end of the end of the thing uh, yeah thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot everybody for joining really appreciate the company in the chat um, as someone who has done live streams to pretty much no one before you don't understand how much uh, <laughs> how much it improves things or how much more enjoyable it is to have people interacting with you uh, so yeah really appreciate it Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. You vote by scrolling down to the bottom and clicking the vote button, I think. Yeah. You just have to keep on scrolling, though, because, man, it's a long one. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you again. Bye-bye.